Good morning. Good morning, Sister good morning. Rose. How are you? I'm good. Hope you are. Well. Well, that's wonderful. Hey. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Good morning, all. Morning. Good morning. Hello, everyone. Hi. Have one minute. Hey, Sylvia. Hey, it's twelve o'clock. Okay. I guess I'm going to cut some light on. It's 12 o'clock. Excellent. Good afternoon, everybody. Good to see everyone. Uh, kind of excited about today's message. Um, let me preface uh, everything today by saying there will not be uh, this evening prayer will pass. I have uh, I have uh, five um, phew, uh, preaching engagements coming up, so I gotta gotta be kind of a I'm kind of cognizant of that, and uh, just you know not trying to neglect my my duties as pastor. But uh, two of these conferences, uh, uh, next couple of days, we got the home going worship, and then uh, the ministers conference. I don't know if it's a mistake or not on their part. They have asked me to uh, be the conference preacher on monday and uh i'm gonna preach the unadulterated gospel all five times and so i'm gonna just trying to be obedient to my body you know to what my body tells me so um thank you for joining us everybody we honor god for your presence
uh, just trying to get a little situated here. Um, I want to uh, keep lifted today. There's a name on the uh, prayer list is uh, Lamont Christmas, um, who is the cousin of Sister Rose Moss. Let's keep Lamont lifted in prayer uh, as well as everybody else on the line. Uh, and so let's pray and then we're going to get started with talking about uh, thorn theology, you know, the necessity of affliction. Uh, God, our Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. God, you've been so good to us. Uh, in spite of all that we've done, God, you have continued to be faithful to us and we love you. We, we know, Lord, that uh, we don't deserve all the good that you have bestowed upon us, but nevertheless, God, we are, we are so thankful. Now, Lord God, we pray in the name of Jesus that you would enlighten us, shine a light, toward our, this path in which we walk every day. The challenges uh, are what they are, but our God is mighty good. Now, God, we bless and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. We are uh, looking at grace today, um, grace, uh, in a different sort of a um, spotlight. Uh, grace in terms of uh, a man who acknowledges that he has an affliction, and he is looking to alleviate the discomfort associated with this figurative thorn. Um, you know, it, it's not something that he uh, initially wanted to have, but uh, through the lens of spirituality, God allows him to see that there's a purpose even in the thorn. So let me read this. Um, and, and, and it's been used by many to say that even Paul uh, had a physical week. We don't know if it was a physical sickness. We have no idea. Uh, you know, we just know that there was something that some obstacle in his life. Um, and, and some theologians, I don't know if they're theologians or agnostics, uh, trying to figure out if uh, maybe God just didn't answer him. Uh, however, we understand that Paul's thorn in the flesh uh, wasn't just physical, but there was a bigger purpose in it. And, and so I hope that just to begin this discussion, that, that that helps somebody on the line today, that maybe what you're going through is, is bigger, you know, than what you can even see. And so the seventh verse of 2 Corinthians 12, and you all are going, y'all are going to talk to me today, uh, like you always do. I love this new format. The seventh verse of that 12th chapter of 2 Corinthians. Unless I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of revelations, uh, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan, to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure concerning this thing. I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me, and he said to me, my grace. So here we are, Reverend Dorothy, my grace is sufficient for you. Now, yes, three times. And, and so what God does is he doesn't remove the thorn, but he refocuses uh, a Paul. And, and then he says, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities and reproaches and needs and persecutions and distresses. For Christ's sake, for when I'm weak, then I'm strong. Now, this is what I want you all to do from this this point forward, if you don't mind. I know you've read this over the years and that you're well uh, well versed in this. You understand what this, you know, what this is about. But but the next time you go back, read, read, let me see, read verse nine in reverse. Okay. So so uh instead of going in the natural order, my my grace is sufficient for you, go uh, read it this way. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. And because of that, my grace is sufficient for you. Um, I, the reason why I need grace, you and I need grace, is because we have weakness. Um, there is only one omnipotent being, and that being God. And so the reason why God... Uh, God's grace is so powerful is because we are so needful. And so what, what does it mean 
for, for, for God's grace to be sufficient. Now, consider the answer that God gave to Paul's pleading uh, in his response. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power, excuse me, is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more uh, gladly about my weaknesses so that God's power may rest on me. So there, there is a providential purpose to why I'm going through what I'm going through. God has a plan uh, even before um, I, I, I knew that I had a thorn, before I, I, I had this affliction, um, God had a purpose in it. And, and so God turned my affliction into a, a gift. Hmm. Only God can do that. And, and that, that gift, that unmerited favor, um, and I'm going to deal with this uh, at another time, but, but, but you can have unmerited favor and still have challenging times in your life. Um, you know, a lot of times people feel like, woe is me. Why am I going through all of this? I have all of these troubles in my life. But, but God is, is really in this text is letting us know that it isn't, it, 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 your, your favor isn't always going to be in your, in your moments of comfort. But, but you still experience favor uh, in your times of challenge. Paul asks God, begs him really, uh, three times to take away the demon that was sent to attack him. In response, God makes two points. Two points. Not God, God doesn't have to preach three points like Baptist preaches. Uh, he, he, God says, first of all, uh, his grace is the answer. Uh, my unmerited favor is the answer. And, and his power is made perfect in Paul's weakness. And so you and I have to acknowledge at some point that we are uh, weak beings apart from the power of God speaking to us uh, or God's hand upon us. Uh, otherwise, we would be overcome or overwhelmed by life's thorns. And so making God's power perfect. Uh, let's deal with the second point first again. When God said that his power is made perfect, he didn't mean that his power is somehow imperfect, okay? Uh, the Greek form to make perfect means to render a thing full. The fullness of God's power is, in, is revealed. Listen to this. The fullness of God's power is revealed in contrast to Paul's weakness, okay? Mm -hmm. and, and much of the fullness is like a light that is contrasting total darkness. And so here we are, weakened beings and, and, and struggling with the thorns of life, but God extends the gift of grace to us. And before we become preoccupied with complaining and this idea that we're under attack and that um, there is nothing that can be done, what God wants us to understand is that we have been blessed with a gift in spite of how our thinking, our flawed thinking may be. <clears throat> Every thorn, uh, these thorns are not punishment, but they're perfecting mechanisms in order to mature us in the faith. And so Paul, at one moment in the seventh verse, he says to us that he asked three times for this thorn to be removed from his flesh. But by the time we get to the 12th verse, uh, what we see is that that he was he says uh, that the signs of an apostle were wrought among you in all patience and signs and wonders and mighty deeds. Something happened in order to move the perspective of Paul from one who was in pain to one who has been perfected through the challenges of life. And, and I pray that on the line today to somebody who is feeling. Um, and I don't want to want to sound like I'm beating anybody down. Who has felt sorry for themselves? Who felt like uh, everything in the world was against them? Uh, preoccupied with what people were saying about you, popularity issues, uh, health issues. That God's strength brought you through, and it would not have been, uh, it would not have 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 happened if it had not been for God's grace. 
which is sufficient. Let me keep on moving because I want to get to get to your conversation. And so back to the first point, God's grace is a powerful force. God's grace is undeserved favor. It is God's expression of goodness towards people who cannot earn his pleasure in their own effort. It aim towards us it changes us it changes our perspective again you cannot readily accept grace unless you ex unless you admit that you and i are weakened beings apart from the power of god god uh, wants us to know that grace is not an emotion. Emotions come and go. It is an expression of God's nature. So when God said, my grace is sufficient for you, he did not say to us, listen, what some well-meaning saints may say while they're patting you on your hand, calm down, Paul. You don't need me to take that demon away. You just need to realize that I like you and let that demon do its thing. On the contrary, God's grace is very active. We we are saved by grace. We are healed by grace. We are, listen, we are empowered by grace. And most importantly, Mother Hines, we are transformed by grace. We are not the same because we have an intimate knowledge or that intimate sort of connection with what grace has done for us. All that complaining and that belly aching and all of those, you know, this one's against me and that one's against that, that that's not grace says that my focus has to be on what God has done for me, what God is doing for me and what God will do. And so grace has to be expressed for it is uh, freely by grace. Listen, that we truly uh, uh, by grace that we yet exist. So now we must ask what is meant by the word sufficient. My grace is sufficient. This word is translated from Greek and it has a couple of meanings. It means to properly ward off. That, that you, we could stop right there. We could, we could stop right there. Uh, uh, Reverend Dorothy, uh, my, it is sufficient. My grace is sufficient. You don't need anything else. You don't need to fight for it. You don't need to fuss for it. You don't need to step over anybody to get it, but it avails itself to you. And, and we need to understand that it is to have an unfailing strength. Grace doesn't run out. Grace uh, is always there for us to, to, uh, to attach ourselves to. It is to be strong. It is to suffice. It is to be be more than enough. It is to defend. It is to ward off. It is to be satisfied. It is to be content. It is sufficient. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes sufficient sounds like, well, you know, it's okay to have. No, what it's saying is there is enough power in grace for you to overcome the, the sort of this preoccupation that you and I have with our thorns. Sometimes we give the thorn more attention and more dialogue than what we give grace. And so, you know, uh, again, this whole idea of being chronic complainers about what we're going through. And, and again, you know, well, Pastor, are you telling me not to complain? No, I, chronic complainers, always something wrong, always going through something and not seeing that there is a bright side somewhere. What he is saying to us in this is my grace will defend you. My grace will ward off this demon it will it is sufficiently going to meet your need because you have admitted your weakness there it is brooks um you have brother brady you and i have to admit our weakness in order to grasp onto grace if you keep fooling yourself or trying to fool others into thinking that somehow you're strong enough to get through this thing on your own you have negated the power of grace i know i keep saying this word i know that you know you're beating the drum but if you do not embrace the ever present need for that unmerited favor for god God's grace, you have abandoned or turned your back on the power of God. And so listen, and you have allowed God the opportunity to show himself strong in your life. I know you're strong, but you are never as strong as when you admit your weakness and your inherent need for God's grace. You know, people who in even in and around the church, 
who will try to make you think that they have some sort of bulletproof armor or vest that is not like the full armor of God that we talk about in scripture. And so this is an exciting response to Paul that he began to boast about his weakness. There it is right there, Mother Hines. Uh, he now goes from being preoccupied with the thorn to calling it a weakness that has connected him to God's grace. Mm, God have mercy. You can't do anything greater than to confuse the enemy. Let him know, listen, I know I got a thorn. I know I have challenges. I know I'm weak. But when I can brag about my weakness, then that gives the power of God. It gives it a release in my life. No, Paul, uh, God. God does not uh, ignore Paul's prayers. He doesn't do that. This is an opportunity for God to show himself mighty in the life of Paul. My grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. It is the season, especially Reverend Dorothy, in this season of pandemic where people are challenged mentally, spiritually, psychologically for us to admit that, hey, we're going through some things. We have some things that trouble us soul but if we can just lean on god believe in god that he is not ignoring our pleas for help we have all he has already given us everything that we need to come out victoriously from these situations his grace is his power that has been given to his church to his people in the middle of our weakness and when we are weak on our own we are strong in god and so oh god i just said i'm about to say something reverend dorothy they're gonna they're gonna log off after i say so stop whining stand up, use the weapons and the power that God has provided us. It is at that point that Paul's attitude changed. He is no longer complaining to God about the situation. Paul realized that when trials come our way, that they are simply an opportunity for God's power to be strong in our lives. He learned to boast about his own weakness with the realization that even in the weaknesses of his flesh, the grace supplied power of God on the inside of him and on the inside of us enable us to live in watch this Pete I got a thorn mother Hines but I can have a thorn and have peace joy and victory opening up the the the, the uh line for dialogue um I put a lot right there I got more that I can give you uh but I'm asking you now talk about uh, the gift of grace in spite of some affliction that you've gone through, some sickness, some pain, some relationship. You don't have to specify. Let me let me let me do my best, Crystal, uh, uh, Dr. Crystal Michelle Wooden. You don't have to you don't have to uh, tell your story. You know, well, this person did this or this one did that. But your your the strength of facing the realization that uh, despite the thorns, and you don't have to name your thorn. I don't care if it's a second cousin or or an uncle. I, that that that's not. But but your 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 to see bigger than your thorn and recognize the power of God's grace to bring you out uh, as more than a conqueror. Thorn in your hip, but still got the victory, still got joy, still got peace. Come on, y'all. Talk to me today. I'm here to hear something. Let me start off, Pastor. Yes, ma'am. And I got my tissue because I might end up having to cry. Cry your cry. Um. I know what I know about God's word. I know that God's word tells me that he loves me. I know that his word tells me that when I'm weak, he's strong. Yes. I know that his word tells me that he doesn't do anything to harm me. And so that's the basis for which I... Um, for which I'm 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 making this little conversation on. Mm -hmm. I can tell. I can tell after I've gone through something. I can tell that God has supplied the thing that I've need needed, based on how I've gone through it. And so while you were talking, I reflected on a couple of things. And I can go back to as far as when my husband passed. 
because I knew God loved me and that he didn't allow my husband to pass to harm me, I could find some level of peace in that he didn't make a mistake. He knew what he was doing. My father died next. And uh, some of y'all that know me know I was a daddy's girl. But again, God's grace was sufficient during that time. And I even found that uh, at my father's death, I kind of was able to see what God did in that he took my husband first so that it allowed me space and time to go take care of my father before he died. And then my mother and most recently, my children. But in each one of those situations, after the situation, oh, while I'm going through the situation and after the situation is over, because we don't know how we're gonna act in a situation until the situation presents itself. But as I have gone through those situations and come out on the other side of those situations, I've been able to see the grace of God on me so that I have not fallen apart in the middle of those situations that could have been situations that, um, that caused me to fall apart because they were all dear people to me. And, 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 and since those situations are over with, I can see the grace of God on me and I can thank him. And that's why I praise him and give him glory because I realized that in my flesh, I could not have gone through those situations the way that I had. But it's because of the grace of God that helped me to go through those situations the way that I did. And even the weaker people, you know, my son, there were times when I had to help talk my son up because they threw all of that stuff at him so fast about needing open heart surgery that he found himself who is not usually a weak person, but he found himself floundering during the situation. And I had to talk him up. But the reason that I could find strength to do that was nothing but the grace of God. And so I'm, I'm just grateful for God's grace. And I understand that those were, you know, temporary uh, uh, thorns. Unlike Paul's, I do have thorns that are around me and on me, have been on me for, you know, my Christian life. And so I can relate to Paul's thorn, but those were like temporary thorns that were in my life that God's grace had to see me through them. That was absolutely amazing. Reverend Dorothy, what you just did is you did two things. First of all, three things. You blessed your pastor. Thank you so much for, for being transparent on here. And so what we're going to do next week, Reverend Dorothy, is the subject. You just gave us a subject. The subject for next week is I'm hurting, but I'm still here. And, and I'm thinking that you may lead that. Uh, we'll, we'll discuss that. Um, and here's the other thing. Uh, and Reverend Dorothy, you helped me with this. It, 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 it's paradoxical because uh, God, God, God will send unconvention, unconventional gifts. And even in the transition of loved ones, sickness of loved ones, that don't look like a gift, but the gift is what you are today because you've experienced what you have. So thank you so much for sharing that paradoxical reality that when I'm weak, yet I'm made strong. Thank you so much, Reverend Dorothy. Okay. Deacon Moore, yes, ma'am. All that I, you know, mine is simple. I realize that um, without grace, I would not be able to endure my thorns. Because it's the thorns in my life that help me to realize who's going to bring me through. And so I, I, I said, weakness, 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 that he didn't take it away because weakness helps us to develop Christian character, you know? And, and, and to be overcome by it, there'll always be thorns in our lives. 
you know, we are, don't live a thornless life, you know? Um, and, I, and I find that when you admit uh, our weaknesses, this is when we affirm God's, God, God's strength. We realize that it's not about me. It's about what God is doing in me. And I recognize his strength. I recognize his greatness. I know that I could not endure the, the, the thorns without God, grace. And so, you know, that was a big thing that, you know, jumped out of and, and when we talked about sufficient, grace being sufficient, I think it, uh, words was a, it's all you need, you know? It's all you need. It's all you need. It's enough, you know, because it wards off whatever it is. But that's what I, you know, when you were talking about sufficient. Yeah, so grace is transforming. It's pressing. It does, um, it, 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 it helps you to endure. Those, those are the things of grace. That's right. That, that I can't go down to the store and buy. Ah! You know, I can't buy that. No matter how much money you have, you need God's grace. I love it. And it will be sufficient. That, yeah. um, no flowery words, but that's what jumped out at me. I love it. Deacon Morgan, uh, the one of the gifts that 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 and you 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 alluded to it that Paul received was he said, So I won't boast, so I don't get the big head. Yeah. Uh, because if I could do it under my own strength. Then, then you know, I would think God. myself to be God. That's right. And that's dangerous. You go back to the Tower of Babel. When you think you are God, there is an yeah. inevitable fall. And like you said, I, I shouted. I, I was trying to be. I was trying to be dignified. But you said yeah. I can't go down to the store and buy. That's right. Somebody need to put that. Somebody need to write that down. Put it on the sticky and put it on your refrigerator. You can't buy. <laughs> you can't buy. Then put it on the sticker. I like that. You made me shout. I was trying. I can't even be dignified around you. I, I had to holler. Can't go back. Thank you, Deacon Morgan. That's that's mighty good. That's good. Taste and see. Yeah, Pastor. Mother Vi, how are you? Look at you. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Pastor, you know, I you have said so much. Dorothy has said so much. Sister Thelma has said so much. As I read uh, this scripture earlier, I became so filled that God has shown me the difference in his studying, in my desiring a closer walk with him. That's good. I didn't always understand the thorn. I used to think that God was punishing me, that I had done something so wrong. And I beat up on myself because I felt as though I wasn't living the way that God wanted me to live. But as I've studied and I realized what the thorn is all about, I thank God for renewing my mind, for helping me to understand scripture, to know that what my grace is sufficient, what that really means, because I recognize that sometimes Satan will just allow you to beat up on yourself to the point that you can't even understand what it is that you're reading. You know within yourself you want a closer walk with God. You know you want to live a, a, a Christian life, but sometimes when we are not in scripture, when we are not in Bible study, you can't, you have got to, it's just not enough to know about God. You have got to know God. Hmm. And I just thank him that my relationship with him is so personal, so, so, so close, so intimate that I can go through my thorns. Mm -hmm. And I do have them, no question. But it is such a blessing to realize I'm going through this, but look at the peace that God has given me while I'm going through. 
because yeah. there's nothing that I can do about it, but pray and wait <laughs> on him and walk with him. And so I'm just so grateful. I was reading this morning in my devotion about sometimes we give our problem or our issue more attention than we are giving God, you know? And I realized that for so long, I focused on how can I do it? How can I fix it? How can I help this? And how can I help that? And I just thank God that each day, God draws you closer. He gives you newness of life. He gives you wisdom and understanding. And like I say, this morning, when I read this, I just had a hallelujah good time right here in my place alone. I, I just thank God for how he, how he shows us and connects us and holds us and speaks to our spirit. I just, I'm just, I just thank him for his sufficient grace because I'm telling you, it is sufficient. No question. That's amazing. Right, Marva, two words, two words. Uh, that you offered us was um, your thorn has allowed you to have a more intimate and personal relationship with God because your thorn is your thorn. That's right. And 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 nobody on the outside you can explain it to them, but nobody knows possibly the agony or the, right. the pain or the concern of your thorn. Mm -hmm. Talk to me more about that. Cause you, you use those two words and I, I, I automatically flag those intimate, personal. Absolutely. I, I, I just feel because I have grown in my relationship with God, I have a, des a greater desire to please him with my life. And I just feel as though this closeness helps me to understand how much God loves me. And he does nothing to hurt me. He does nothing to bring me down. And so I've learned even my thorn is given to me for a reason, mm -hmm. because I don't want to get to the point that uh, I am not humble, that I feel like I can do anything on my own, but because I cannot. Mm. And so I, I just thank God for how he's showing me who he is in my life and what I need to do and how I need to stay focused because uh, thorns are going to come. <laughs> Thorn, thorns are yeah. the trouble that we go to when, right. when we're not going through, we're coming out or we will be going in. So uh, it's just good to know that even when you're going through, it's good to know that God has made us some promises, even in our going through. That's it. And so I, I just thank him. And I just think that this time that we've had, that we have, have had to stay closer, uh, I, I just recognize so much about uh, sometimes uh, heading to the building that we call church. This just gives us an opportunity. It has given me the opportunity to hear God so much better than I think I've ever heard him in my Christian walk with him. And I, I, I'm just grateful. I am just so grateful. So he permits, he permits thorns to exist, but not to antagonize us, but to enlighten us. That's what I'm getting from you. He permits it. Absolutely. Oh, That's good. I That's good. Thank you so much. It's Thank you, my father. Uh, yes, it's hurt and it's help all at the same time. Mm. It hurts and hurt, but it helps. Wow, mm -hmm. wow. Kind of like crucifixion. Crucifixion certainly hurts. Yep. It, it hurts. It hurts. But yeah. but 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 yes, it it helps us. Yes, you know, <laughs> we would have liked a better. A, a better way to do it, but but it took hurt, it took death, it took pain, it took blood, it took sweat, it took tears, in order to rescue us. Right. And 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 the cross is all about grace. Absolutely. So, Mother Maddie, I saw you had your hand up. You know, I'm watching. Thank you so much. This is amazing. Oh man. Um, I think I want to read the scripture first because by the time I finish, I don't know if I'll be able to. Um. And it's John 16, 33. 
Well, bless the Lord. Okay. And it says, these things I have spoken to you, mm -hmm. that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And in a lot of ways, I, not in a lot of ways, I was a daddy's girl. From the time I was born until I was 23 years old, if, I, if it wasn't nobody but me and my daddy, I was perfectly happy. He combed my hair, he cooked, he took me to the doctor. I, I was a daddy's girl, taught me how to tune up a car, whatever it was, my daddy was right there. In 1974, God took my daddy home. It took me a it took me that full year to walk through that thing. And during that year is when my mother and I, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's not that I didn't recognize her or love her or that, but it was me and my daddy. And today I can thank God for taking him when he did. Because for 23, almost 24 years, I had him. But from 1974 to 2000, when he called mama, it allowed us to develop and, and nurture our relationship. So had it not been for losing daddy, at that time, I don't know what my relationship would have been with my mother. And certainly if she had gone first, I wouldn't even have recognized what I was missing and not having a fully developed, you know. So it was certainly a thorn, but a lot of good came out of it. And Mother Maddie, you know, that, that's amazing because you would have never asked for Daddy to, in 74 to transition. But those 26 years you had with your mother. Yeah, and, and I say it, you know, a thorn is, it's, it's a hidden, and I, I don't want to refer to death as a gift, but I, I, just for our, our, for our sake. You know, it, it, a thorn is a hidden gift that sort of blossoms into something that you don't see in the moment that you recognize you have the thorn. But in retrospect, you look back over your life and you say, you know what? That was the greatest lesson I could have ever learned. Affliction taught me some things. I'm not just talking about me. I'm talking about this is us when I say it. Affliction has a way of, of challenging us, but challenging us to change us because we would have stayed in our comfort zone we never would have evolved. Maybe the relationship with mama doesn't evolve. Maybe maybe I didn't know how strong I really was. I didn't know that I could stand on these two feet of mine and, and do the things I needed to do. Maybe it, it blesses another relationship because I said, well, I might have missed this, but I ain't going to miss that. You know, it, it, you know, it, sometimes when people, and Mother Bad, you help me with this, when people can recognize the gift in the thorn their lives get better and they stop mother who, who mother vi said you know um, giving more attention to the thorn than to the grace and that that that's why people get stymied spiritually because we think the thorn is well, why why am i going through this it's, it's not the what but it's the what now the thorn is the what and after you realize you have the thorn is the what now. So thank you, Mother Matthew. And even, even during the course of his illness, we began to join because there were decisions that had to be made that she was uncomfortable with making alone. alone. So, you know, it drew, it began to draw us even before he, he transitioned, but certainly afterwards, um, it was an it was an entirely different relationship. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing. That's major. That's a thorn that developed into something bigger. And now your children, your children's children, benefit from the experience you had with your thorn. 1974. 
all the way through now. So thank you so much for sharing, Mother Maddie. I appreciate you. Anybody else? Okay, let me share. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Pastor. Um, after listening to everyone, I can say that um sometimes in your thorns, it helps you to bear more fruit. Mm. Sometimes in families, friends, church, or wherever. And it can bring more glory to God. And as Reverend Dorothy says, it helps and it hurts. And we have to look at this journey of life is full of thorns. Thorns don't bring comfort. But I found as we grow in his grace and his God's grace and his knowledge and recognizing who God is, it helps. Because God wants us to see him at, as he showed Paul as he is all sufficient uh, and not us depending upon ourselves. And sometimes without thorns, we can do that because if thorns keep you humble. Of course, we don't like them, but it does keep you humble. And we all have some thorns, some big thorns and some are little, but they are thorns. That's right. Mother Hines. Yes, sir. Um, Tell me if I if I'm on the right track. I, you know, isn't you know, um, is, is is there a beauty in this text? One of the beauties of this text that we do not we can speculate on what Paul's thorn is, but is it the real one of the great beauties of the text is that he does not specify the thorn so that we all can kind of associate ourselves with the text and say, okay, apostle preacher church planner paul okay and yeah. and paul doesn't say it was his see you know scholars sometimes get in the way we we get rid of it. uh eyesight um uh malaria uh uh persecution um and we speculate because we want to know why do we need to know we don't really need to know the specifics of the thorn we just need to know that a thorn exists and 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 it, it helps us to be able to Put a blank behind the thorn and say, "Okay, this is my thorn," and I realized I could get through it. Yes, you know, and that that's very important. That you know, you you have to read a, a text, and I'm not saying eisegesis, but you have to read it to be able to associate yourself with it to make it applicable. So, yes, Mother Hines, I need I need to hear. And yes, you. also you're right because if you think about Paul, look at all the 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 epistles and all the work that God allowed him to do with the thorns. Um, and with the thorns, he had help a lot of times how, you know, it was Timothy, Luke, or if you read Acts and the different people that helped him, even though he had these thorns, how God used him. So we can look at Paul as an example, you know, for our own life. That's right, that's right. I love that, I love that yeah. you get help. Yes, man. Who? Yeah. Glory, Pastor. Hey, Sister. Okay, Sister Glory, how you doing? Fine. Okay. Um, I just like to mention some of the uh, thorns and the things that have come my way in life. I remember at age twenty-seven, uh, when I was told that I had breast cancer, and my youngest son was two years old, and I had uh, two other sons, but. Uh, I didn't, I felt that God gave me the opportunity to do other things when that happened. Because when that happened, when I left Walter Reed Hospital, um, I went and enrolled at uh, Northern Virginia Community College so I could go back to school and uh, get my degree. And uh, I just, I just uh, saw things like that as being an opportunity for other things. And uh, th there have been so many uh, thorns that have come my way. Like with my youngest son uh, having a major illness and dying. But God always gave me the strength to do other things. And I thank him for it. Amen. Mm -hmm. so, uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, birthday, birthday queen. Uh, Deacon Sylvia. Thank you so much, Mother Gloria. 
let me uh, let me let me let me just put a stamp on and i'm coming right to you uh, uh, um uh, deacon sylvia so you just said that your thorns were not obstacles but avenues to opportunity right i love it thank you mother mm -hmm. i love it. thank you mm -hmm. deacon sylvia uh good afternoon uh pastor good afternoon everyone as i uh am um listening and reflecting on everything that's that's been said thus far uh and i think about grace i i i think about the fact that without grace and and i love what viola said about the intimacy the intimate relationship with uh our lord uh but without grace we wouldn't even have that if god had not extended his grace had if God had not given us a measure of faith if 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 God had not extended his grace so that we would receive his invitation to be in a relationship with him then we we, we just we, there's nothing we can do and I'm, I'm I, I just wanted to <clears throat> read uh, Psalm 119. Uh, uh, verse 71, it is good for me that I have been afflicted, <laughs> that I may learn your statutes. And of course, I've heard that. And of course, in another place, Paul says that. But this statutes thing, uh, it, it, as, as everybody has said, it teaches us how to live, how to live, how to survive. Um, um, how to survive the attacks of the enemies and 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 this intimacy that I, I, I love so much. Um, God knows each one of us and uh, I've talked about this to, uh, recently about how he knows just what we need exactly what we need as we go along uh, our Christian journey, as we go along this sanctification that uh, he, he knows uh, for my own self personally, God has in his grace has taken a look and said, you know what, uh, there's a gap, there's a look, there's a gap uh, in your understanding and uh, you haven't really fully uh, 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 accepted uh, that I love you. You you haven't really you you need go back to uh, look at that. I think Sister Sheila says go back and get some milk. You know, mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, this perfect fit. I want to say this laser like focus on us as individuals is absolutely uh, essential to life. Mm -hmm. And it just, as we go through and, 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 and we're talking about thorns and we, we, we all have thorns, but as we go through, God has to show us step by step on how to do that. It's, it, it's not on, it's, it's his grace that would allow, and I'm I'm not going to go on and on, but that, that would allow us to uh, make it through. I've said several times, uh, and because it is the truth, uh, that uh, we I've heard all of my life about hold on to God's unchanging hand. And God knows that is true and what we have to do. But I have learned with some of my thorns that even when I am so afflicted, I can't hold on. That God's grace wraps me up and God holds on to me. He doesn't say, well, you know, at, at your age or whatever, whatever, you, you shouldn't, you know, you should be holding on. You should be able to stand up and sing a spiritual right now. Right. But he understands us and he loves us to the extent that he will not let us go. And, and Deacon Sylvia, you made such a good point that, that I'm still lost on the, the stuck on that piece about personal and intimate. And it should never escape us that the scriptures say that he knows every hair on our head. Mm -hmm. and, and that means that 
you know, and, and I, 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 I don't know if my dad is on the line. It means that uh, the grace for Deacon Sylvia and the grace for Harold Brooks um, isn't off the rack. Mm -mm. <laughs> is tailor made mm -hmm. he knows our need he knows what gets us through he knows what gives us peace and and i don't think that that should escape any of us um you know we we kind of throw these things around i was talking to um, a couple of friends this morning about i, I don't want to serve god and just be lost in cliches and bumper sticker slogans you know i want to have this intimate relationship with him so that while i'm dealing with my thorns that I recognize the message in the thorn, you know, and that's so big. And Sylvia says, you know, even even when I can't hold that that that's 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 sound theology. That even when I can't hold on, he won't let me go. You know I mean, you know, and and he'll he'll reach down and pick me up. So thank you, Deacon Sylvia. So I hope that your your birthday was absolutely amazing. You deserve the best and even more than that. Thanks, city. Pastor. I thank you. I didn't know that you had had a procedure. I thank you and everyone that took the time uh, to recognize me. God bless you all. Thank you so much. Thank you. That's, thank that, you. that's a part of that exceeding abundantly I that we tell. read about. Thank I you. And, 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 and I, what can I say about Marvel Long? But anyway, <laughs> hallelujah. That's good stuff. I'm glad you enjoyed <laughs> Hello, Pastor. Hi, yes, this, is, this is Lorraine. Good afternoon, everyone. Hi, Sister Lorraine. Hi. Um, recognizing our thorns uh, helps us to, or allow us to let go and let God. Um, at one particular time in my life, this, this particular thorn I had was fear. Oh. And it was doing a long distance drive, my first long distance drive from DC to Alabama. And I, my car was a 1968 Volkswagen. Mm. <laughs> so I'm on I-95 traveling to Alabama. Oh, and so, you know, you had these 18 wheelers on, on the road, all this traffic and everything. And every time I got near an 18 wheeler, oh, I, I became fearful because it kept feeling like it was drawing me up under the truck. Mm. So I began to drive erratically. And I recognize that if I continue to drive like that, I'm going to kill myself or somebody's going to be in the accident. So I immediately say, okay, God, you got, you got to take the wheel. And the moment I said that, and I promise you, the moment I said that, the sun, I have never seen the sun shine so bright that day as I did that, that day. The sun was so bright. My hands was on the steering wheel but I was not driving that car. Mm -hmm. I did not have control over it or That's anything. Good. That's good. And I realized at that time that, you know, through my thorn of fear, knowing that if I did not let God take control and let his grace, that showed me his grace was sufficient. Mm -hmm. And that he, he had my back, even though I, you know, but that that day, it was just, I've never seen the sun shine so bright like that. Wow. Never. Wow. Never in my life. I haven't seen, and unfortunately, I haven't seen it shine that bright since in my life, mm. in my trials and going through. But I know that, you know, his grace is sufficient and I have to let him take control so That's that I can see that light again, that sunshine like that again. That's mighty good. So, so when he took the wheel, he took the wheel <laughs> and, and, and because he took the wheel, you understood that, that you were going to be safe. See that the thing that we right. neglect, uh, sister, and Lorraine, that I was not in control. That's what we need to understand <laughs> is that when we talk about God being sovereign, it eliminates our power from the equation other than the choice to serve him and all powerful God is, is, is who we serve. And and an all powerful God can transform uh, what we perceive to be affliction, the thorn, mm -hmm. or obstacle into something that can become that can give us clarity. Sometimes we don't see clear because we're comfortable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and I know that that's saying, well, that sounds crazy, Pastor. No, uh, we we get to we hone in when when the challenge is before us when. You know, when 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 we have to, we have to deal with the realities of the situation, the reality of our situation, 
is that we don't have power to move the thorn, but 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 having it there makes me focus on the one who will bring me through, even if the thorn isn't removed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's what's important that we need to really embrace. The one who has the thorn in his hand. Who has it in his hand. Yeah, and it. if we and, and and the great thing, Deacon Morgan, oh God, you just started something. And, and <laughs> a figurative thorn is is you know when i think about uh the disobedience of humanity yeah. and how god knows that we're going to do what we're going to do disobedience you know misguided things but but he sticks with us <laughs> you know he strengthens us and and you know i i just i realized you know years ago that complaining, you know, and I, I really, I, I got to make this admission. I, I received this when I was pledging a fraternity, my fraternity, was that complaining doesn't cure the situation because you're going to still have the situation going on around you and you complaining about it only makes it worse. Absolutely. You know, and, and so that's very important. Sister Craig said that she was in a 68 VW and, and it looked like death was going to overtake her but then she gave jesus the will and that's you know we we we, we kind of flippantly put that out there but you know uh let him take control of 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 the path that you take that you're on and watch how good things turn out yes, yes ma'am i oh. just like to add something that god is uh taking me through a thorn right now i i, I had left the screen for a while long story short uh, I, I want to make a request that when you pray, you include my dear friend and next door neighbor, Emma Rivers. But anyway, oh. uh, I had left the screen because I heard a siren outside. Anyway, long story short, when I went outside, uh, they were taking her. Uh, the EMTs were uh, take her daughter came to the door and said they're getting ready to take mama uh, to the hospital. And so I, um, and she has, she's been ill for a while, but anyway, I, my first thought, Sylvia was, oh, I'm going to have to follow the ambulance, go to the hospital and, and, and see what's going to happen. The spirit spoke to me and said, you are in Bible study. Go back and ask them to pray for her. Yeah. <laughs> and Miss Rivers is gonna get praying now. You know that you're in the right place. Vicky Morgan, thank you. Uh, uh, Sister Vice um, um, hit on something, and of course, all around. But I, 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 I had here. I did not always. When we talk about a relationship with God mm -hmm. and His mercy and His grace, I did not always recognize God's presence. Mm in the grace that he had given me you know oh, God. the grace of life. i didn't always recognize that he was present until i studied you know you study and that's how you get a relationship with god because you get to know him just like when you have that new boyfriend the more that you with him the more you know him about him so god you know i always use that analogy with my class you know, so the more you study about it. But I didn't realize that it was grace that was sustaining me. I didn't know about that, you know? I just took it for granted. Yeah. 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 I didn't know what his name was. Right. But you have to, the scripture said, be still. Mm. And know that I'm God. That's right. And so when you sit still for a while and listen to people like sisters, like all of you all, then you recognize God's presence in your life, the presence that brings grace. That's right. You know, that gives you grace. That's and right. you know, as she was talking, I, I just got kind of happy. I wanted mm -hmm. to say hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> because when it was cold outdoors, uh -huh. cold, this cold day in New York, and my furnace kept on working. Listen. Woo. I, I feel that. Do you feel that? I felt that one. Yes, sir. Yeah, but that's grace. That's grace. I think I got one more. I got oh, Sister Rose got a hand up. Thank you, Deacon Morgan. Sister Rose. 
Good afternoon to all. Uh, Pastor, I would just like to read that scripture in the message. Yes, you Because may. all the talking that you all have done is in the message. Because of the extra uh, extravagance of those revelations, and so I wouldn't get a big head, I was given the gift of a handicap to keep me in constant touch with my limitations. Satan's angel did his best to get me to me. What he in fact did was push me to my knees. Yeah. No danger then walking around high and mighty. At first, I didn't think of it as a gift and begged God to remove it. Three times I did that. And then he told me, my grace is enough. It's all you need. My strength comes into his own in your weakness. Once I heard that, I was glad to let it happen. I quit focusing on that handicap and began appreciating the gift. It was a case of Christ's strength moving in on my weakness. Now I take limitations in stride and with good cheer. These limitations that cut me down to size abuse, accidents, opposition, bad breaks. I just let Christ take over. And so the weaker I get, the stronger I become. Amen. And over in Psalms 34 and 19, David mm. says it another way. He says, many are the afflictions of that, <clears throat> of the righteous, but Come on, conjunction, where's your function? Mm -hmm. But the <laughs> Lord delivers him out of them all. We live with adversities every day. Mm -hmm. Cancer, but. Diabetes, but. but. COVID-19, but. but. My Ooh. grace is sufficient. Over in Genesis 32, when Jacob wrestled with God all night long, for his blessing, my grace is sufficient. We get to smelling ourselves with our nose in the air. We get in that high altitude right. and it warps our out attitude. And our swell heads have us thinking, I, I do this and that and the other. Right. Hey, what's God to do? What God got to do with it? But hey, I thank God for my thorns. It made me all that I am, mm -hmm. and it made me all that I am not. That's right. And God makes a way of escape in my weakness when, with his strength. And I am able to bear whatever. So yes, God's grace is sufficient for me. That's right. All right. Thank you, sister. Mm. Thank you. Yes. I'm going to um, do some. Oh, okay. So this is how I want to close. I want you all to um, consider this. Thank you, sister Rose. That's amazing. I I um, I was kind of channeling through my head about um, John on Patmos, who you know is one of my favorite scriptures, the whole book. But John had been boiled in oil. Mm removed from the comforts of home, which probably wasn't so comfortable after people came persecuting Nero and others. Um, he was beaten probably to within an inch of his life. And he's on this rocky, uh, in, living in a rocky cave on Patmos. And, and, and the word says that, that he was in the spirit on the Lord's day, which means he did not allow these thorns the, the, the persecution, the affliction to separate him from the love of God. And so focused was he. Sister Sheila West, he was so focused that he writes letters to the seven churches of Asia Minor. Don't allow your affliction, mm -hmm. your situation mm -hmm. to make you spiritually paralyzed. Mm. in your pain there's still work and still ministry to do um, you know I, I learned a long time ago um, that you can sit back and, and nurse your fear and your pain uh, 
I, I happen to have a, I have parents who um, <laughs> I watch deal with things on their jobs, and I was like, I ain't know anywhere I could deal with that. And then, um, <laughs> but I, I just, you know, I look at people in the church who have overcome illness, sickness, divorce, pain, uh, dealt with uh, church abuse uh, from hierarchy. I've seen people deal with cancer, COVID. Diabetes, I've watched it all in 19 years of pastoring. But I also have watched people who understand the power to overcome is not within us, but it's our reliance, it is our trust, it is our faith in God. Why has the church continued to grow and to thrive uh, during COVID and we, in month number 22 or 23? Well, the reason why we do is because we recognize that this ain't nothing but another thing. Mm-hmm. And that God is going to get glory out of this. And maybe it was to humble us. Maybe we got so caught up in putting our fancy clothes on and, our, you know, you know, the sort of the pageantry of, mm-hmm. uh, uh, of church that we miss the meaning of church. You know, I, I want to get back like anybody else. But I also see that what God is, I believe that what God is saying to us is that it is not up to us to narrow the meaning and the power and the scope of church but to be the church, even on social media, even on a Wednesday afternoon. And so um, I'm just, I just glorify God for all of these things. Listen, everybody, I'm not going to keep you a couple of things, a couple of, couple of things. Um, you're going to get an email today. Tomorrow at five o'clock, um, Sister Diane Bryant, uh, Dr. Rhonda Jett, I'm going to be preaching uh, for, for, for their missions, uh, uh, conference that they they've been working with that's five that's going to be i believe that's going to be uh broadcast by by radio but you can also get on and listen in the same way we do um with our sunday school all right that was thursday friday at 8 30 in the morning uh, preaching for another missions conference and that's um i don't think that's on that might be on the phone too uh if you can make it uh, I, th- I sent it out if you don't have it uh reach out to me by email that's 8.30 tomorrow morning with Purity Baptist Church and some other people that I went to the ashram with. Uh, we'll see uh, folks coming through on Saturday. Saturday, uh, that email came out from Deacon Lizzie about uh, the home going for Sister Johnson. Sunday, we'll have church. And on Monday, if you are able to make it Monday, I'll be preaching for the Baptist, let me get it right, the Missionary Baptist Ministers Conference of D.C. and Vicinity. Um, you know my feeling about some things. Uh, you know, I, but I'm going to preach because Reverend Too Good is the first vice president and has invited me. So one o'clock, there's a um, there's an email that's going out uh, that's gone out um, in order to invite you into the Zoom meeting. There'll be a private lot like this, uh, and that'll be at one o'clock. So you're going to get all the information. Keep Sister Rivers lifted in prayer. She's going to the hospital. Um, keep uh, Deacon Lindholm lifted in prayer because she's there. Keep Sister Rose lifted in, in prayer uh, as her cousin Lamont Christmas is going to the hospital. Uh, Jennifer Kieser uh, and all of those who are dealing with some sickness, some illness, some pain. Glad my mom is, I think she's on here. She's on here. My dad is doing better. Uh, and we are just thankful. Um, had a little minor surgery. Got to go back and get a few things done with that. I, you know, I, I feel okay. I, you know, tonight, tonight. There will be uh, no prayer with pastor on Zoom. I'm going to ask you to pray. I, I still got a lot of preparation for those five days of five preaching engagements uh, to deal with. So at 7 o'clock, if you would just pause in your living room, your kitchen, and just pray. Um, pray as long as you want to. Um, and uh, and uh, I'm going to be in preparation for these, uh, these five days that I need to deal with. Uh, but thank you all. What a great discussion. Next week, next week's discussion is I may be hurting, but I'm still here. So we're going to deal with that. We're going to deal with the hurts in, of life and continue to do what we're doing. I love you all. Uh, ber- happy birthday to Deacon Marvin, oh, Deacon Sylvia. Let us pray together. God, our Father, we thank you for another fruitful discussion, Lord, that has made evident the power of grace, God, and the magnificent mercy that you've bestowed upon us, Lord. We uh, love you. We we know that we only have intimacy and personal relationship because of your grace. And Lord God, we thank you that uh, the curtain at the, at the, uh, of the temple has been rent, 
Right. And that we now have access to the glory, God of God. Now we pray, Lord, that you would continue to order our steps in your word. Lead us, guide us every day, God. Send your anointing. Father, we pray, order our steps. Our steps. This and all other prayers I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, love y'all. Love you. Love you, too. Right. Good seeing you. All right. Good all seeing right. you. Love you Bye -bye. All right. See you Bye -bye. now. Bye -bye. Love you so much. Thank you, Chris.